I call the Honourable Member for Reid. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I've only been in this place uh, a short time, but it hasn't taken me long to work out that politicians have a real skill in making things complicated. Madam Speaker, we have a structural budget deficit, and I've heard economists trip over themselves to explain what that means. I come from Western Sydney and we like keeping things simple. We have 11.6 million people that, as of January the 31st, had a job. They were paying into the system. We, had we have 23.2 million people that are drawing on the system. Madam Speaker, we have an employment problem, and the debate around it has been so poor. Why? Because I don't think enough of the people taking part in the debate have actually employed anyone. Those opposite come from a union background, and that's fine. Unions are relevant to them and 13 per cent of the workforce. But of the 11.6 million people that I mentioned, 7.6 million people are employed by SMEs, by small, medium and family businesses. That's 70 per cent of the workforce. Where's their voice? Madam Speaker, it sits on this side of the House. Over the past six months, those opposite have called for support for big business. And today's example is Qantas. There's pro probably no better example of how commercial thinking differs from thoughts on the other side. In the year 2000, Virgin kicked off. Qantas had 29,200 employees. Virgin had none. Today, Qantas have 33,500 employees, and Virgin have 9,500. Over the next 12 months, Virgin will employ 1,500 more people. So, whilst over the past 13 years the airline industry globally has struggled, we have had increasing competition and increasing employment. There is competition in play in this market, as there should be. Government should not be involved in this market. Government creates the environment that business operates in and, and ultimately business employs in. And what's this environment been like? Over the past six years, the expense side of every business in Australia, irrespective of size, has had their P&L mercilessly persecuted. At the same time, consumer confidence has been shot to pieces. Whereas traditionally business owners would increase prices, maintain margins and ultimately bottom line, they haven't been able to do that. In fact, because consumer demand has been so weak, many have actually had to lower their prices at the same time as incurring increasing costs. They have turned to the expense side of their P&L and the expense that has been lowered to offset this is wages. SMEs have either reduced their hours of operation, changed the way they run their business, or the owners have worked more hours themselves and not paid themselves. Over the past six years, there has been an unprecedented casualisation in our workforce, and that has occurred to give employers the flexibility to reduce their expenses by lowering their wages. Here's where it gets even worse. The reality is we don't only have an employment problem, we have an underemployment problem. The best piece I've seen on this was done late last year by former Senator, Labor Senator John Black. He concluded that un and underemployment in this country at the moment are running at around 13 per cent. Is it any wonder that yesterday we heard youth employment is running at near 20 per cent in the west of my electorate in Western Sydney? From Auburn to Dremoyne, all the way through there, family businesses operating shopping centres have laid off casual staff and are working extra hours themselves and not paying themselves. This is the reality. This is microeconomics. It is how it plays out on the ground. And those opposite keep asking for our plan. The plan is simple. Get out of the way and let SMEs solve the employment and underemployment we have, as they have done in the past and they will do in the future. Get out of the expense side of every business in Australia, let them take on bank debt, back themselves and employ people the way they have done in the past and the way they will do in the future. The best way to do this is to repeal the carbon tax. It feeds into every expense in every P&L in this country. It takes no prisoners. Madam Speaker, I know that the engine room of this economy has always and will always be small medium and family businesses. I just wish the Labor Party got it. Thank you. Your question is that the House do now adjourn. I call the honourable member for Ballarat.